Oh, and no matter how I try to time this, you're gonna have to wait. You got five seconds. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. It is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and uh, do me a favor. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and of course Sam DeGange. Yeah, that would be me. And when you do, you will find a lot of the most cutting-edge works. If you wonder why I'm top talking and typing at the same time, I am not being rude. What I am doing is putting it on my Facebook. And until the time that I actually hit record, I don't get the embed code that lets me post this live. So that lets me be in incredibly rude to all of you, which I must do as I put this on Facebook. Come to hear me live at this link. And you know what? They now know where to find me doing what I am doing right now. Thank you for allowing me to be rude because Google Plus made me incredibly rude. It is Sam I. B. Ganji from The Correct Views reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. Christelle, you may go if you need to, my behind the scenes queen. Alright guys, check this out. For those of you that don't know, spring cleaning, I am going to every single topic that I have that is in my bookmark section. Now guys, that's huge. I mean, that is really freaking huge. I'm going to go through the newest topics, some of which were only posted just today. Some of them have been posted a long time ago, and I didn't have a chance to address them as I should have. So, it's now officially summer. I'm doing my spring cleaning, as it were. I'm going to go through every topic I can get. And by the time this rolls around, I'm also doing it tomorrow. I did it yesterday. I'm up long before Rush Limbaugh is. Um, let's face it, guys. If it doesn't get covered tonight... <laughs> It gets cut, and I'm not doing any other topics whatsoever that aren't new. So spring cleaning is underway. This is dated June 12th, and that is very new, obviously, 2013. Snowden, the U.S. government has been hacking China. Uh, the, the best way to read this is to go to Infowars.com because the Business Insider has so many freaking pop-ups that I do not suggest going to their site. NSA whistleblower Ed Snowden has told a Hong Kong newspaper that the U.S. government has been hacking Hong Kong and Chinese networks for at least four years. The comments were made as part of the South China Morning Post exclusive interview with Snowden, his first since revealing himself on Sunday. Snowden reportedly showed a reporter, Lana Lam, documents that showed that the NSA had been hacking computers in Hong Kong in the mainland since 2009. Let's face it, let's be real here. This is the correct views. This isn't something that Rosie O'Donnell is on. So let's be real, shall we? We hack them every chance that we get and they hack us every single chance that they get uh, to say otherwise is stupid here's what's happened for those of you who don't know who Mr. Snowden is Mr. Snowden is an American hero on par with the most important American heroes in all of American history he proved that the government was spying on a majority of the American population without a warrant, in violation of the, first, of the Fourth Amendment. And for those of you that might be, I don't know, maybe you listen to Nickelback, maybe you listen to Rihanna, you know what I mean, maybe you're an idiot! Maybe you don't realize that the government did not give us 
the right that is the Fourth Amendment. According to the Constitution, which you and I were born into, the Constitution, if you are an American, says that these are inalienable rights. These were given to you from God. If you must be an atheist, and I am not, they are given to you by the fact that you were born in this country. And we, as a country, recognize that these are not rights that the United States government gives to you. These are rights that you have had since you were born. And the Fourth Amendment prohibits the government from doing what it is that they are doing right now. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying here? The government is wrong because you were given these rights when you were born in this country as a citizen of the United States of America. This is also dated uh, June the 12th, 2013, and for worse. Snowden is just the straw man that Obama needs. I'm not going to get to this, uh, into this in depth. It says basically, in a nutshell, that President Obama is using this current catastrophe as a, a straw man, as, as a, a person to put up, as it were, to take the beatings for what it is that were injustices that were and are still occurring under the Obama administration just as it did under the George Bush administration before you accuse me of being a Republican, I am in fact a libertarian. Go to the article, but what I do want to get to is very much here what it is that there are some things listed here as fact that cannot be, that cannot be, cannot be moved. And these are, in fact, the four things that I want to get to that are very, very important inside of this article. This is what Obama, your great freedom-loving, uh, transparent, government-minded president, this is what this filthy swine has done. In a way, Congress amended FISA. If you don't know what FISA is, uh, search FISA. The four key provisions that were added opened the doors to unlimited abuses of power, and I'm going to get to all four. One, prohibits the individual states from investigating, sanctioning of, or requiring disclosure by complicit telecoms or other persons. Permits the government to not to keep records of searches and destroy existing records. Why even record at all? Three, protects telecommunication companies from lawsuits for, quote, past or future cooperation, end quote, with federal law enforcement authorities, and four, allows eavesdropping in emergencies without court approval. Let me ask you a question. We're just going to address uh, number four real quick. There's definitely enough to be argued there on all points, but we will just address number four. Who is it that decides what the emergency is? Am I the only person here that finds out to be a really big, big deal? The person that decides what is an emergency is the person that has the power to spy on you and I without any warrant because they happen to think that it's an emergency. I don't know if I'm going to have time to actually get to the article here, but I, I, here, I will say this. There's a rumor, it's true, there's a rumor that uh, libertarians and uh, people of like mind, such as me, 
in the event of a federal emergency would be whisked away to a prison camp or something akin to it in the event of a disaster. And you know what? I believe that's probably true. Um, and Flo just confronts Heckler, but where's the video? This is interesting. Uh, Donna Anderson, this is also InfoWars, June 5th, 2013, Spring Cleaning Show of the Correct Views. When you're playing jacks in the schoolyard, it's okay to say, hey, quote, either do it my way or I'm going to take my marbles and go home. But when you are the first lady of the United States, that is Flotus. You don't just threaten to go home because you're not getting your way. On Tuesday, the I might I add swine, that is Michelle Obama's arrogant response to a heckler, didn't earn her any points, it says, for respect. It just made her look more like a petulant, spoiled brat. And I'm going to go on. During it, I'm being attacked by my own computer door. During a Democratic fundraiser in front of approximately 200 people, people, Mrs. Obama was heckled by a woman in the crowd who was calling for President Obama to issue an executive order that would bar federal contractors from discriminating against lesbian, gay, and bisexual transgender employees, LGBT, and look, I'm one of those people that think that most of these people are crybabies. I'm just gonna be honest. But at the same time, they have rights. They have rights whether or not I think they're politically wrong or not. They have rights. And Flotus doesn't have time for that. Instead of calmly waiting for the heckler to stop, it says, as most professionals would have done, and I'll get to that, the first lady decided to stop her little foot and play the arrogant card. Mrs. Obama stepped away from the microphone and said, one of the things I don't do well is this. Ladies and gentlemen, there are probably several thousand, under a hundred thousand people that have any idea who I am or my band passing time is, and you'll be hearing them in about 15 minutes when uh, the break comes up. I can handle hecklers. Let me tell you a little story. I go Do me a favor. Look up my band, uh, uh, Passing Times, uh, The Alexandrian Solution. Better yet, look up War On For Your Mind. It's our new single. And you'll hear that we are not death metal. Because I wear goth makeup. And because we are not mainstream, we used to always be booked with death metal bands. These days, those death metal bands tend to love what it is that we do. And yes, I'm wearing a Combi Christ t-shirt. Um, back in the day, that wasn't the case. And there were times that we were heckled. I am proud to say that I handled all of those instances, I think, minus maybe one, a little bit better than she did. The first lady can handle hecklers, but Sam I.B. of the correct views can. And don't even get, uh, don't even get Serenity, our singer, started, because I, we, we trained her so bad, she's immune. It goes on, the crybaby first lady then pointed at the heckler and told the crowd and delivered her ultimatum. Ooh, she gets an ultimatum. You could listen to her or the heckler could have the microphone, but I'm leaving. You decide. You have one choice. The audience applauded Mrs. Obama. Why? I do not know. And a woman in the crowd told the heckler that you need to go. Surprisingly, there is no video available that shows the First Lady's tirade. And it goes on to say that if this were, let's pretend this were George Bush. I'm going to paraphrase this. Let's go ahead and pretend that this was George W. Bush. 
Does anybody at all think that there is any chance whatsoever that George W. Bush would have gotten able to get away with this without any video at all? Or the First Lady, Mrs. Bush, you know. But miraculously, there is absolutely no video of this to be found in any way. Guys, you're listening to The Correct Views, and this is the Spring Cleaning Show. I am going through all of the articles that I can get to, because I want to catch myself up. I want to catch you up. There are a lot of things going on that are relating to your liberties that you don't know about, and I'm going to do my best to let everybody know. And if you do know about some of them, and you already know that I am right, then make sure you hit share, because this show grows the more that you watch. This is from the Economic Collapse blog at .com. Some more Obama news here this time. Not Mrs. O, but the big O himself. As in, oh my God, he's the worst president ever. That kind of O. Obama's super secret treaty, which will push the deindustrialization of America into overdrive. Because I'm doing this live, and because I can take up as much time as I want, since I'm going to be on for two hours, I'm not just going to read through this. I'm going to talk to you as my listeners and my viewers for a moment. The more that we bring industry and uh, the, the, the making of things out of our country, the more, the faster, and the sooner that we bring ourselves into the grip of something that is outside America. And if you think that that happens to work, let me ask you, how happy are you to be working at a job that you despise? And I happen to have a good job right now, but I've had a million jobs that I did despise prior, many how many of you are delighted at where you work? How many of you would rather have worked at one of the hundreds of thousands of jobs that the American government and the American structure has set to places like Mexico, China, in some instances even India, where they work for pennies on the dollar? For those of you Kesha fans that don't know any better, that means they work for less than you. How many of you are happy to be working at your mundane, awful jobs because they sent everything else out of the country? If you are not happy about that, then you need to pay attention to what it is that I'm about to read to you. Again, Michael Snyder, the economic collapse blog.com. Did you know that Barack Obama has been secretly negotiating the most important trade agreement since the formation of the World Trade Organization? It asks, did you know that this agreement will impose very strict internet copyright rules, ban all by American laws, which means keep our jobs here, give the Wall Street big banks much more freedom to trade risky derivatives, and that means... Uh, money that is not here yet, but that they're going to bank on that is going to be here, that isn't backed by anything other than the fact that the government will make you bail them out, and force even more domestic manufacturing offshore, that is to say, away from this country. If you have not heard about this treaty, don't feel bad. Obama has refused to even give Congress a copy of the draft agreement, and it has banned members of Congress from attending the negotiations. The plan is to keep this treaty secret until the very last minute, a common Obama ploy, and then to railroad it through Congress and have it signed into law by October. The treaty is known as the, quote, Trans-Pacific Partnership. It is a nightmare. And it says the nations that are reported to be involved in the development of this treaty include the United States, Canada, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, Peru, Brunei, Singapore, Vietnam, and Malaysia. Opponents of this treaty refer to it as the, quote, NAFTA of the Pacific, end quote, 
And if it is enacted, it will push the deindustrialization of America into overdrive. I'm going to keep reading this because this matters a lot. The One World Economic Agenda that Barack Obama has been pushing is absolutely killing the U.S. economy. As you will see later in this article, it says, We are losing jobs and businesses at an astounding pace. And each new free trade agreement makes things even worse. For example, just check out the impact that the recent free trade agreement that Obama negotiated with South Korea is having on us. I'm going to read all of these. A 10% decline in U.S. exports to Korea. 10%? That may be you. Maybe you listening to this. It may be your job I'm talking about. It's a job you didn't get, that you earned, that was stolen from you, that was cheated from you. The U.S. trade deficit with Korea has climbed to 37%. U.S. auto industry has been crippled. Well, we can't make cars anymore in this country. Uh, we managed to make enough to get us through World War II when we were grossly unprepared. But what, suddenly today, almost uh, what, 100 years later, uh, 75 years later, we, we don't know how to build a, a freaking car anymore? Loss of U.S. control where international trade, banking, and finance is concerned. And lastly, a projected $159,000 jobs will be lost. And it says, wait a second. I thought that free trade agreements were actually supposed to increase exports. So why have they declined by 10%? Did someone make a really bad deal? And of course, we have all seen economic devaluation, it says, that NAFTA has wrought. When NAFTA, that is the free trade, when NAFTA was pushed through Congress in 1993, the United States actually had a trade surplus, that is money in the good, with Mexico of $1.6 billion. By 2010, we had a trade deficit, and that's a negative numbers, with Mexico of $61.6 billion. Every time that one of these things gets pushed through, it becomes worse and worse and worse for everyone that cares about what happens to the greatness of the United States of America. And let me say something. I'm not saying a lot. America is not the awful country that so many people believe that it is. America is a really wonderful country that is being led by some of the most despicable people that have ever lived. America is the reason that you're not listening to this broadcast in German. America saved Russia's ass. Oh, don't you hate when you click an ad and it immediately starts playing? Oh, I can't wait to call you out. Who is this? Look at this. You can't even shut it off. Do not go to Breitbart.com because Breitbart.com decides to play their music real freaking loud because they don't think you can click on the ad if you want it or not. So don't even go to look this jerk's article up. I'm going to go back to where I was. These things really matter, people. They really matter a lot. And the way to fight this is by knowing about it. It's by watching this video. And it's by sharing this video with other people. I want to get to this. Do not go to Breitbart.com because their website sucks. However, I will give you the quote and the place to find it if you happen to have a very nice pop-up editor. It plays their video, by the way. It's not a pop-up. 100,000 Christians die for the faith every year, according to the Vatican. Now, I'm somebody that is very leery of the Vatican. I myself am a Christian. I force that on no one, but I do suggest it is that it is the right path.
this is probably true. And I'm, I, I happen to think that there are elements of the uh, Vatican, of Catholicism, that are leading, leading us towards a one-world dictatorship, which is the nightmare that was predicted in Revelations. But in this instance, guys, pay attention to this. Even if you're not a Christian, needless to say, this matters. It doesn't matter whether or not you stand up for Christians when they are being persecuted if you are not a Christian. What matters is that you make sure that those Christians are alive to stick up for you when you get attacked. A top Vatican official has said around 100,000 Christians are killed every year for reasons linked to their faith and pointed to the Middle East, Africa, and Asia as the biggest problem areas. Again, Israel and Islam, in terms of their nations, lead to a lot of injustices to a lot of people. I have found in my studies that Israel commits, commits a lot of atrocities and Islam creates atrocities that are beyond speaking. The solution is to leave. Leave the Islamic side, the Islamic nations, leave Islam. Israel has more than enough capability to take care of themselves and if we would let them do so, they probably would. We need to get out of here. Monsignor Silvano Maria Tomasi, that's my dad's middle name, was quoted by Vatican Radio on Tuesday as saying that the figures were shocking and incredible. Tomasi said Christians were also forced to leave their homes and to see their churches destroyed in some parts of the world and were often subjected to rapes, kidnappings, and discrimination. America's done a lot of good there, haven't they? The Vatican official made particular reference to the kidnapping of two Orthodox bishops near Aleppo in Syria last month. Religious freedom is beset by, quote, sectarianism, intolerance, terrorism, and exclusionary laws. He said, while also pointing to expectations like Bangladesh, where he said rights are protected, Another senior Vatican figure, the Secretary of Pontifical, Con Con Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, Mario Tosso, said recently that discrimination against Christians should be countered in the same way that anti-Semitism is and Islamophobia. I agree with that. Why is it that the only people that really ever get a pass here are non-Christians? Why don't people ever stick up for Christians? Well, not ever, but not usually stick up for Christians. When it's Christians that are usually there sticking up for everybody else. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the holier-than-thou people that both you and I can do without. I'm talking about, as a whole, Christians have historically done a lot of good. Yeah, there was the Crusades and the Inquisition. But granted, nobody at all can claim that they have a religion that has never caused any problem if they've been around and had any, uh, any exposure for any length of time. But what matters the most here is who is causing the most trouble now. Many would argue, maybe it is Christians, many would argue that and the whole problem itself is that religions do not, in fact, respect. And some typing and talking at the same time. Uh, for those of you, it, it doesn't really matter so much which religion it is. Maybe it's the fact that religions of, of the world do not necessarily respect each other the way that they really should. And maybe that in and of itself is the big problem. Maybe it's more important that we look back and realize that not everyone is going to agree with us. But maybe it's a really tangible, good idea for us to respect each other and allow each other to live. Whether it is the Jews that are being persecuted in Russia or Germany, or whether or not it's the Christians that are in fact being persecuted today. Maybe the most important thing we can do is realize we do not need to be killing each other. And unfortunately, there used to be a time in Christianity 
when that meant Christians persecuting those that are not Christians at the edge of the sword. Unfortunately, again, today it seems to be Islam that is a radical, correction, radical Islam that is creating that problem to a large extent today. It doesn't matter who's doing it, people. If we don't learn how to unify, then we are going to allow our governments to spy on us regardless of where we are, and we are going to be a lot less stronger because we are fighting each other instead of unifying. You're listening to Sam I.B. on the correct views. I'm going at this for two hours, a half hour, whack in the can! Brought to you by uh, Media Speaks. Do me a favor. Look out how to... Look, get some of the ads on that site. Uh, look up uh, the pack sites. Look up how to protect yourself. Uh, are you going camping this year? I'll tell you what. You want to go check this out. There are ads. There are sites. There are value pack. I can't say enough good things about it. There are... Uh, there are more than enough things there to make sure that you want to check this out. Maybe you're just going camping this summer. I'm going to be real. Maybe you're not a prepper. What you're really doing is just going, just going camping this summer. That's all you're doing. But guys, before I go to the break, I was going to do this after the break. But you know what I'm going to do it now. Nitro-pack.com. Are you going to remember that? No. So go to the mediaspeaks.com and just click on the ad. They have some of the most awesome, awesome deals there that you're going to ever see. If you're going camping, you're going to get a tent there that's going to set you up all summer long. Summer just started here. Um, and they got the AMK kit, trauma pack with quick clot. How many of you know somebody dumb enough to cut themselves or burn themselves so badly starting a fire in the middle of the summer that they might need something like this? <laughs> Maybe you know me. Here's where you go. NitroHalfAndPike.com. And let's check this out. $42.95. You're going to find it everywhere else. $48. You might even find it as high as $50, $52. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Click on Nitro half and hyphen pack. It's a Nitro pack ad. Look at what they got. If you're a prepper, you're going to be in heaven. Maybe you just want a happy summer of camping. You're still going to be in heaven. I'm taking a 4 minute and 16 second break. You are listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by me. No, no, I don't want to block. Be right back.
a little bit of my band that is passing time, thoughts of which nobody knows, brought to you by Nitro Hyphen Pack. Go to themediaspeaks.com, click on the link. Um, do me a favor, leave a comment wherever you see this video at. Better yet, don't do it. God knows where it's going to be. You are invited to hit remix, by the way. If you hit remix, this will be on your YouTube channel. If you hit share on Facebook, it'll be on your page. Retweet it. If you want to buy that song and a few others on an EP called The Alexandrian Solution, do me a favor and email the correct views at hotmail.com, subject line passing time EP. If you want to listen to it free, all I want you to do is leave me a comment. You can listen to it free all day long. Look up Passing Time, The Alexandrian Solution, you'll find our EP. Look up War on Free Your Mind, you'll find the new single that we did, that we wrote for Alex Jones. Because Alex Jones has done a lot of things for the correct views. Alright guys, this is from Natural Society, Elizabeth Renter. Marijuana helps a six-year-old beat severe seizures and replaces pharmaceuticals. For you top 40 fans, that means drugs that you need a prescription for. This was dated May 20th. Uh, ask Christelle. She's right over there. Uh, no, she don't want to talk. Every time I say ask Christelle, she doesn't talk, which is great because it makes me look like I'm talking to myself. Um, the behind the scenes queen isn't going to back me up here, but mark my words, I can't get rid of certain articles that just eat at me. This is dated May 20th, 2013. It is currently 4.40 in the morning. I am doing the live spring cleaning show at 6.13, 2013. This story really rocked me, and I could not delete it. And you're going to see why. As if the medical marijuana industry wasn't controversial enough, it says, with opponents arguing it encourages drug addiction and crime and supporters citing years of research to the contrary, there are now children benefiting from it. Oh, but marijuana is so bad for the children. Christelle is laughing until she could almost cry. Anytime that you hear, I wish, I wish you would talk. Anytime that you hear for the for the children, it means screw the adults. That, that is exactly what it means. While there are several cases across the country of children being given various forms of cannabis, that is to say variations of THC, which is found in marijuana, to treat diseases and illnesses. The case of six-year-old Jaden David is getting a particularly heavy dose of attention, where marijuana helped the boy beat severe epileptic seizures. Oh, but doesn't Child Protective Services need to come running to their rescue? Sing Ohio, we're running to their rescue to save the children from the marijuana? Sing Ohio, no! And I'm being silly, but listen to this, people. Let's be real. Jaden suffers from something called Dravet Syndrome, and I'm not going to play around anymore. Listen to this. Jaden suffers from something called Dravet Syndrome, a form of epilepsy that results in frequent and painful seizures. In his short life, he has been rushed to the hospital a total of 44 times. Did you see why I quit playing around? Listen to this. In an effort to control these seizures, Doctors had the boy at 22 different seizure pills, excuse me, had the boy on 22 different anti-seizure pills each day. Sure, they helped to control the violent seizures, it's written, but Jaden was left immobilized by their strength. At wit's end and nearly suicidal, 
Jaden's father turned to medical marijuana. For the first time since he was an infant, Jaden went an entire day without a seizure. And I'm going to keep reading. 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 I'm from Ohio. He's in pain and suffering and crying, explained his father, of Jaden's normal daily seizures. You can't help him no matter what. What are you supposed to do? You have to do whatever it takes to save their life. Jaden's father, Jason David, uses non-psychoactive -psychoactric, form of marijuana. This means that his son doesn't experience any sort of high. Do you hear me? He's not getting his son stoned. This means that his son doesn't experience any sort of high Aside, of course, from the high of being pain-free. And I say God bless him. While he still doesn't talk, Jaden is now more active than ever, running, playing with friends, and swimming at the local pool. There was a time when he couldn't eat solid foods or function, it says, because of a steady stream of pharmaceuticals. His father was taken to calling the medicine, quote, miracle marijuana, as opposed to medical marijuana. This is similar to the experience that another three-year-old boy had where marijuana, actual, marijuana oil actually helped beat cancer. And you can find the link at Natural Society. Uh, marijuana helps six-year-old boy beat severe seizures, replaces pharmaceuticals. And yeah, I'll tell you what. I told my girlfriend, come on, Christelle, come. No, she's not coming on camera. She never comes on camera. Um, I told the beautiful Christelle, I wish you would have gotten out of bed. Now, I work midnights. We have strange hours. You are watching me late night, not early morning. It's 4.45 in the morning. It's early for you. No, 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 no. It's very, very late for me. Um, I told Christelle, I wish you had gotten out of the bed because I interviewed a hemp wire girl and look her up if you don't know who she is. And in every way that is not disloyal to the wonderfulness of Christelle. This girl's the most amazing girl I've ever interviewed. For those of you that don't know, go to the mediaspeaks.com and look up Hemp Oil Girl. She had a brain tumor. She talks about it the way that I might tell you that I fell off of my skateboard. It's like, oh, you know, I was trying to hop up on the steps and my fat ass slipped off and I fell on the ground and burst my ass cheek. 